guys. Hot dog. Mm. One, two, one, two. We're back. Man, it's been a while, huh? So much has happened since we last talked. Doors have been flying off of airplanes. People attacking judges. Did you see this one? Look at this guy. That's a crossbody block in pro wrestling. I mean, if I was him, I would send this to the WWE as like an audition tape. What else has been happening? Lizzo knocked over a bridge in Baltimore. Did you see that one? Man. Like, I know I'm big, but bitch, I'm not that fucking big. Like, look. She's got to stop doing that. Then President Cadaver gets up there talking about we're going to pay for the bridge. It's my intention that the federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. And I expect the Congress to support my effort. Why would the government pay for it? Send Lizzo the bill. She's the one responsible for this. Bye, bitch. <laughs> Speaking of Lizzo, did you see she quote unquote quit the music industry? Yeah, she had a temper tantrum online about how she's tired of being the butt of everyone's jokes. Yeah, the one who makes a fool of herself wherever she goes. Posting videos of herself twerking in pools. Hey, hey, bow, bow, yeah, yeah. At sporting events in front of kids. This girl is obsessed with exposing her ass everywhere she goes. And she's shocked why people have no respect for her. Maybe because you have no respect for yourself. You ever think of that? I want to make this video because I just need to clarify. When I say I quit... I mean, I quit giving any negative energy attention. It's incredible, the mindset of these people. You want, you, you, she wants the same level of respect as someone who carries themselves with dignity. You don't get that. You didn't earn that. You promote degrading yourself. What's up, ho? You promote obesity. There's foodies and then there's food whores. And I am the fatter, the latter. You post photos of yourself funneling bags of Doritos, eating like a slob on your social media. Your social media handles Lizzo be eating. <laughs> if I can just give one person the inspiration or motivation to stand up for themselves and say they quit letting negative people win, negative comments win, then... I've done even more than I could have hoped for. I mean, do you realize that the message that you're sending to society is that it's okay not to take care of yourself? It's okay to objectify and degrade yourself? You try to pass that off as, as if it's somehow empowering? Could you imagine Aretha Franklin twerking at a Knicks game? How about, how about a Odell? Imagine her doing this at a sporting event in front of children. Could you imagine looking out your window and seeing Aretha Franklin twerking in her front lawn or wherever the hell she is here? Look at this. Look at, look at this. Look at this scene right here. I mean, who does this? Somehow you're shocked that you don't get respect in society. In no way, shape, or form am I the only person who is experiencing that negative 
voice that seems to be louder than the positive. I mean, give me a break. Try again. Start taking care of your body. Keep your clothes on. Promote good health. And just make your music. And then watch how all of a sudden people will start to respect you. That, that's how this works. Your reputation matters. It, it just seems like people just don't, like, like they forget about that. How you present yourself to society matters. That, I mean, it, reputation is a real thing. Let's go, man! Anyway, before we start the show, let's uh, shout out my guys at Raycon. Raycon's Everyday Earbuds. I got this routine in the morning. I'm trying to get these runs in. And these things really help get me through. I still use the very first pair of headphones they sent me. Maybe two, three years ago. They, they still work as new. No problems. I never had a problem with them. The, these things are so consistent. They start at half the price of all the other premium audio brands. They sound just as good. 32-hour battery life, 8 hours of playtime. Raycons come with a 45-day happiness guarantee, so you really can't lose. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon right now. Joey B vs. The World listeners can get 20% off. Go to buyraycon.com slash joeybvs today to get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's right. You'll get 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon.com slash joeybvs. Yeah, so YouTube's doing that thing again where they take my videos down. Yeah, they, they two two of them this year already. So apparently you can't make camel toe jokes. Yeah, they took it down for sex and nudity, even though there was none in it. By the way, the girl was wearing joke underwear. It was like camel toe underwear. It wasn't even real. So the, the whole video was just a parody. But that doesn't matter. No. They'd rather host videos of people sticking things in their ass. Yeah, that's allowed on here. Those kind of videos are okay. Jokes and opinions, not so much. It's just incredible, the, the inconsistency. This is why I have the Patreon. It, I have a catalog of banned videos on there from YouTube. Yeah, it's like you have to have an approved opinion here. There's just some weird people in Silicon Valley, man. It's just, it's like a whole different country over there. There you go. This must be the YouTube moderators. Yeah, this is what Silicon Valley does when they visit other countries. These people are either from San Francisco, L.A., or Portland. They're one of the three. Guaranteed. See, now, like, these people have jobs somewhere. And they might have power over people. They might make decisions for people. And then some, somebody will say, well, this is their chakra. This is their chakra. This is how they release the stress from their body. And this is how they remove all the negativity in their life. And it can keep a door open now for all positive energy. It's like, yeah, you know, you know what adults do? They deal with it. They deal with it. They don't have to get on a plane and fly to a canyon somewhere in, in East Asia or wherever the hell this is and scream like a maniac, scaring the villagers. I mean, I, do, do, do you think people that live there do this? <laughs> The locals think you're crazy. And then you come back to our country and start dictating things and making decisions for people. Get the fuck out of here. You, you people are crazy. Oh, I know what we got to talk about. Remember the fake DJ? Yeah, the guy who presses play and pretends that he's performing for you. <laughs> If you remember from the last show, I put together my own song. I took Windows 95 error sounds. Because that's the closest thing I could find that resembles the trash these people listen to. Just to show how simple it is to scam everybody into believing that you're, you're a musician of some sort these days. And just to show you how fried these people's brains are, he decides to take 
audio from my response video and makes his own Windows 95 error message song and plays it at one of his shows. Get ready for this one. Taking Windows 95 error sounds. See, now I'm a musician. That's not a response. That's confirmation. You did what I did. You proved to your audience what I proved to mine, that anyone could do this. Taking Windows 95 error sounds. See, now I'm a musician. Thank you. See, now I'm a musician. I mean, if you need more ideas, I can help you, you know, for music. Taking Windows 95 error sounds. Here's an idea for your next song. Why don't you take a fork and stick it in one of your electrical outlets? Yeah, you could record the sound of your electrocution. Yeah, add a beat to it. You know, show up on stage, people go nuts. There's something in the air or the water. There is just something different happening. I don't know if it's a cultural change or just the people are raising their kids different or what, but I, I, just for another example, man, I, there was this guy, um, I'm not too familiar with him. This guy's a popular streamer, I guess, and apparently he lost a bunch of followers and started posting messages about how much his viewers suck and how he only has 13,000 people watching now. Then he starts responding to people saying he wants to off himself. I mean, dude, how does it get to that point? Which now he's saying was taken out of context, but who knows? So then they presented it in a way where it was like, oh, Hassan wants to kill himself because he's like losing viewership. And it went super viral. And I had no idea. I had no idea whatsoever. You want to know why? Because I don't have Twitter on my phone and because I wasn't online. Okay. I wasn't online. <laughs> the point is, these are dramatic reactions to your stream not going the way you want it to. This is literally it. This is the point. This is why I don't... Uh, this is what it is. This is... You don't have any other fucking situation where you have a ton of cyber stalkers that get together, congregate in a fucking Reddit, and, like, upvote this shit into oblivion out of fucking context. Look at this. I don't know how old this guy is. is he in the 30s, 40s? What is he? I don't know. And it's not like this guy's in his 20s or teens, you know? It's like that, that right there, the reaction to that is not of a rational adult. Talking about my dad and sh This is not normal, dude. I mean, there's clips of him talking about how streaming is harder than a nine to five job. Yes, a real job can be gruesome. A real job can make you very tired. But a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you. You know what I mean? In the same way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will. Yeah, tell that to this guy. My social battery runs out after nine and a half hours of streaming and I can't socialize adequately and I worry that like I look like an asshole to random people. That was my point. If social media does that to you, then you shouldn't be doing this. Hassan, XCC's response to Hassan's take that streaming is harder than a regular job? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? He's like a political analyst too. So he, he's got an idea of the direction that the country should go in. People routinely misunderstand something about socialism, and I'm going to bring this up one more time. Socialism is about adequate compensation for your labor. Apparently, he's like a self-proclaimed socialist. This is why I'm a advocate for universal global socialism. You know, so it, he's one of those guys that never has anything good to say about the country. Yet, but yet he stays here. He never leaves. You know, so there's a problem here. It's revealed. Here it is. There's a problem. So 
people, let's do something about it. It, it. Like, I'm sure his friends reached out to him. Maybe he's got a friend in Venezuela that could show him around. And, you know, get him to see that it's uh, more of a fit for him there. This is why I'm a f advocate for universal global socialism. Even though you can go to so many countries that follow along the lines of his politics, but he won't go there. He wants this country to be like those countries, which is, I always find that fascinating. It's like, it's like the people who, who would say like, if Obama gets in, I'm moving to Canada, or, or if Trump gets in, I'm moving to Canada. And it's like, they never do. Most people, if they don't like their town that they live in, they leave their town. And if they don't have the means to leave their town, I mean, they save up to be able to do that, or they try to seek work, you know, in another city or another state. I mean, I know it's not easy to just become a citizen of another country, but you would think you'd at least start the process. And especially if you're making the kind of money that this guy's probably making, if he's a top streamer, you would think you'd at least get a visa and, and spend, you know, half the year there every once in a while. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? People are losing their minds, man. It's, uh, speaking of wacky people, I, I was down in Florida, you know, and I love Florida by the way, don't get me wrong. Um, but there's always some weird shit going on down there. You know, a lot, a lot of odd oddities I, I come across. And, you know, I was doing the, uh, had an appearance at the Orlando Megacon. Had a fantastic time, by the way. Shout out to Rick for setting me up out there. Got to meet some of you guys. It was great. But then I started seeing the furries popping up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was my first time seeing, seeing them in person. And let me tell you, one of them I got stuck in an elevator with and uh, ended up following me to my car. Yeah, it was a blue one. It was with two other people. They weren't dressed or anything. It was just the one. And, and they make these weird squeaky noises. It's hard to describe, like, like, a, like a squeaky baby noise. I don't want to engage with them, you know, because I, I don't know what these things are capable of. You know, I'm still trying to figure them out. So I get out, I get off the elevator and sure enough, it's like, I'm going a couple rows of cars and they're, they're still behind me making the little noises. And I'm like, oh shit, they're going to, they're going to attack me. At some point I'm going to get attacked by a furry. This is how I'm going to go out. Could you imagine? They're going to leave me in a pool of my own blood, you know, and nip away at my body parts. I, it's just, it's my biggest fear. And once I got to my car, they kind of backed off. And I think they, I think they ended up just parking real close to me. But I don't know. What an what a odd coincidence that was. Now, I understand people dressing up as the characters in the films and comic books that are represented at the convention, which I, I think they're very creative. But there is no representation for the furries at this thing. There's no furry booth. There's no furry signing autographs. They're not in films. They're not in comic books. There's nothing there that represents them. It, but yet they dress up as them. I, I, it would be like going to a farmer's market dressed as a possum. It, it would be like you and your friend climbing into a moose costume and showing up at a makeup convention. I mean, what makes you think... This is where you do that at. It, it got me thinking like, it, it's almost as if they're, they're really trying to slowly blend into society and they're just starting slow, like at the conventions where other people dress up as other things. Then, then maybe they'll work their way into going places where nobody dresses up, like coffee shops, the bank, the grocery store. You know, then they start showing up to work in the costumes and then they'll be the barista. The furry will be the banker. The furry will be your grocery bagger. Then they'll be interning at the White House and eventually one of them will become president. And then it's truly over. If we ever have a furry as a president, I I'm out. I mean, that's 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 it. That's the nail in the coffin, right? I mean, what more proof do we, we need? I mean, we know things are upside down now, but I mean, what that's just like... You know, that, that's the stamp. The gavel has been slammed. You know, like, that, that's it. It's over. And we'll get there. It'll happen. 
It'll happen. There's a video of a kid here stealing one of their tails. <laughs> it would have been nice to have that kid nearby while he, I was walking to my car. He said to have some kind of protection. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're new to the channel, we've been trying to get to the bottom of these creatures for years now. I did an entire interview of one while back, uh, gained a small sliver of understanding, but this is still an ongoing investigation. New questions keep popping up. I think what we need to do is I think we need to jump into the fan mail. That, that, that always lifts the mood up a little bit. So if you guys want to send stuff to the show, I, I want you to know that I read all of your letters, every single one of your letters. So if you want to send something, here's the address, 178 Columbus Ave, 237190, New York, New York, 10023. First off, I got to thank Amber for the magnets. Uh, you guys are going to love this. So if you remember the Buddha Bowl girl. What's for lunch today? A Buddha Bowl. A Buddha Bowl. Yeah. Remember her? One of those phony influencers that walk around their house. It's on YouTube. This is the one with the, her friends asking her questions that no one would ever ask her because she thinks she's that interesting. Sammy, what's the best part of your day? Mm, daily gratitude. What is your favorite meal of the day? breakfast and what do you like to eat for breakfast avocado toast avocado toast so a listener of the show was kind enough to make me a buddha bowl magnet <laughs> i don't know if you could see this uh, but it also came with a side of avocado toast how fitting and man <laughs> how detailed i don't i don't know if it shows up if you could actually see it but like this is so detailed i i, I wish she would have uh included some of her information. I don't know if she does this for a living or she's got a website, but she didn't include anything. But if, you, if you're watching now, put, uh, put the link in the comments so people could go you know, support you because th this is like really well done. I, I appreciate it, Amber. This is going on my fridge. What's for lunch today? A Buddha bowl. This one is from uh, Gabriella from California. Dear Joey, thank you for your show and for sitting through hours of menial drivel. You're welcome. <laughs> I assume you must, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to skip around a little bit here. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Ah, here we go. I lost my older sister to TikTok this past year. I'm sorry to hear that. What once was a caring, well-rounded person has now evolved into a man-hating, entitled sheep. She no longer possesses any original thoughts or interests that aren't trending. Talking to her is near impossible as well. Everything goes back to female oppression. She, he, they, it, dog, neuter, whatever. And usually has her saying at some point, well, this wouldn't happen if women ruled the world or... I'm a strong, independent woman who don't need no man. The ironic truth is, however, that my sister is desperate to get married. I am married, so I have tried to give her sound advice and steer her back to reality, but she rebukes my advice and instead turns to her beloved TikTok for relationship and dating help. These so-called experts cannot be much help, though, as they too are single, bitter, and completely oblivious to real life. I guess misery loves company. Anyway, I appreciate what you do. Your commentary spot on and hilarious. Keep up the good work. Much love from California, Gabriella. Thanks, Gabriella. Yeah, you know, the sad thing is, is that you got women who think that all men are the same and there's no good guys out there. And then you got guys that think all women are the same and there's no good women out there anymore. That's not true. I know people think I'm joking when I say this, but I truly am never going to get into a relationship ever again because of how sick and twisted these men are these days. I am begging men to listen. As a woman, the majority of the experiences I've had with men are negative. Well, yeah, you have to go through the wrong people to find the right one. This is part of the process is finding the right person for you. Look, there are so many damaged people out there. You're glowing. And unfortunately, you have to sift through these people. Corner. And some people are just incompatible with you. 
Have you been sitting there waiting for me all day? You have to experience that too. The trick is to recognize the wrong ones before you get involved with them so you don't waste your time. So if somebody fits that pattern that you've experienced before with someone that's led to disappointment or chaos, count up the red flags and move on. But if you carry bitterness and resentment towards everyone, then the good ones are going to pass you by. They're they're not even going to entertain you. The way that women are collectively so sick and fed up with men's BS is so beautiful. I mean, like if I saw this girl walking down the street here, right? The last thing I'm going to think of is to date this person. I'm going to go to the other side of the street. You know, the way that women are collectively so sick and fed up with men's BS is so beautiful. This person is filled with bitterness and hatred and self-loathing and like all, all the worst, uh, you know, personality traits in a person, you know, and it's like, I don't know, you sit down that you sit that person down and you ask them what they want. Do they want a good man? You know, do, do they want someone, you know, uh, a life partner? And they, they might say yes. And it's like, well, look what you're doing. It's like you're scaring everybody away. It's so beautiful. You have to keep your heart and your mind open um, to a new person. You can't carry your trauma over. You have to treat a new person as if it's a new person. If she's around the same type of people as herself, they're all just going to feed off of each other and validate all their point of views. If what you said is true, that she actually does want to get married and she does want to find a good man, she should start listening to people who have that, like yourself. Like She doesn't have to take what you say as gospel, but she should also survey other people who are in your situation. You know, who are in loving relationships or actually like their man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate that, that you're going through that. But there's, there's not much you can do other than plant the seed because you, you can't force feed her. You can't, you know, you, you can't slam it down her throat because then she's going to rebel against it and there's going to be resistance. And that seems to, it seems like that's what's happening, you know. Um, so it's unfortunate, but everyone's on their own journey. Sometimes... People don't see the light unless they, you know, they see it their own way, if that makes sense. Sometimes you just got to figure it out on your own. Gabriella, thanks for the letter. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, we got one more here. I'll read and then we'll do one more and then we'll head out here. Oh, and by the way, I want to shout out uh, Marcus from France for sending the, the coins and the photos. Uh, really cool stuff. I appreciate it, my friend. Okay, uh, we'll go out on this one. Hey, Joey, just wanted to let you know, at the time of writing this, my balls itch. Well, now my eyes itch, and uh, I probably should go get checked to make sure that I didn't catch anything from that letter, considering that you probably uh, scratched yourself and uh, wrote the letter with the same pen. So... uh, now I'm a little concerned, so I'm going to head out. Um, <laughs> anyways, guys, look, it was awesome catching up with you guys. If you, if you want to hear more of my ramblings, you know, get on Patreon. I got more Florida stories. I, I think we're doing a thing on Britney Spears. A, a whole, that's a whole nother situation. Oh, my God. Um, anyway, look, it's great catching up. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Take care.